Hi guys, I'm Carolina. Welcome to the second part of my data engineering course for beginners. In the last video, we covered the extract stage of the ETL process. Today, we're going to cover the transform stage of the ETL process. So what is the transform stage? What does transform mean? To be honest, transform is not a very intuitive name. I think a much better name would be validation step. And let me explain what that means. Okay, so as you know, the entire ETL process is about, you know, downloading the data, saving it in a database, automating the whole process so that you don't have to lift a finger, and that's it. But there is a but. What if? What if? What if something goes wrong? And trust me, many things can go wrong. For example, some magic creatures might intercept the JSON file and corrupt it in an inconceivably wicked way. Or simply, a data vendor might send you an empty file, or a data vendor might send you some duplicated data and you don't want duplicates, or, you know, something else. And you do not want to save that mess to your database. You want your tables to be pristine. Because if your data is rubbish, then how can anyone possibly derive any meaningful insights from it, right? There's a very important saying in data science, garbage in, garbage out, which basically means that if you're going to train your ultra sophisticated deep learning model on messy data, you're just wasting your time. Okay, rant over. I hope it's now clear why we want to validate our data before we save it to a database. So coming back to our Spotify example, let me show you what are some basic data checks that you should do before saving the data in a database. Okay, so let me remind you, this is how our data looks like at the moment. So now let's create one function that will do all the checks, all the validation steps for us. And let's start from our first check, which is actually very simple. Is the data frame empty? And now let's think about it. In general, and many other applications, other data pipelines, if you receive empty file, then, you know, something's wrong. The vendor didn't send you data while you were kind of waiting for it. So you want the data feed to fail. But in our particular case, Think about it. If you get some empty file from a data vendor from Spotify, what does that mean? Does it mean that something went wrong or perhaps it so happened that you didn't listen to any songs in the past 24 hours, right? Because that's what our program does. Let me remind you, it, it saves to a database what songs you've listened to in the past 24 hours and it does it daily. So if you haven't listened to Spotify on a given day, then yes, the data will be empty. So we are not going to raise an exception. We are not going to say this is a failure. We are going to say, okay, terminate it, but it's fine. So as you can see here in the print statement, we are saying no songs downloaded, finishing execution. Okay, the next check is very, very important. So let me introduce the concept of primary keys. So you can think of a primary key as a unique ID of each row in a table. So now back to our data, what do you think is the primary key? So again, that's how the data looks like. That's our table, song name. Mm, not really because some songs can be called exactly the same. Artist name, definitely not because one artist usually produces multiple songs played at. That's your primary key. Why? Because you cannot simultaneously listen to two songs on Spotify. You can only listen to one song in any given second. So you know that each row in this data set is going to be uniquely identified by the exact time that it was played at. What data engineers often do is they impose a primary key constraint on a table. What that means is in this column, all the rows must be different. There can't be two exact rows in this one column. And if the constraint is violated, then it means you've got duplicates. And that is just bad, messy. 
it skews results. Okay, so let's proceed with our primary key check. In this case, we are raising exception. This will actually terminate the program execution. And that's what we want. If we get duplicates, we want the data pipeline to fail. Okay, next. As I said earlier, some mischievous little creatures might possibly fiddle with your data before it reaches your hands. And that's why you want to check if they didn't remove any numbers, for example. Poof, just like that. And then you get nulls. Nulls, empty values. That's not great. And if that happens, we want to know that it happened. That will give us a proof that magic exists. So we will be fishing for that proof in our next check. If there are any nulls in any row or any column, raise an exception, terminate it, fail it. Lastly, we are only interested in inserting the data from the last 24 hours. We don't want to save in our database anything that you've listened 10 years ago, because that's just not what our data pipeline is supposed to do. And let's check that we are only saving the data from within the last 24 hours. Here we are amending the yesterday's variable so that it does not include any more granular data than a day. This is because in a second we will be comparing this variable to a timestamp variable, which does not contain hours and minutes data. So if timestamp is not equal to yesterday, then again we want the feed to fail. Okay, cool. This is some basic data validation that you can and you should do with your data. Data integrity is really, really important. Garbage in, garbage out, remember. Before I go, I just want to say thank you so much for all the feedback you've given me so far. It really helps me. So if you see something positive or something negative about the videos, please, please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. In this way, you will not miss the next part in the series. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you then. Ciao!